celebrating and worshiping and uh, loving our Lord today. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and some of you know secrets are here. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you 
with the oil of gladness above your fellows. All your garments are fragrant with myrrh, aloes, and cassia, and the music of strings from ivory palaces makes you glad. King's daughters stand among the ladies of the court. On your right hand is the queen, adorned with the gold of the queen. Our second lesson comes to us today from the disciple James. Every generous act of giving, with every perfect gift, is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. For your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word, and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves, and on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the hope of all. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with the vile hand, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus obeying the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. As it is written, This people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrine. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside of a person that by going in can defile. But the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, envy, slander, pride, and folly. All of these evil things come from within, and they defile the person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord Christ. Not just a name, 
It involves and embraces the entire person, their character, their essence, and their being. The Old Testament writing reference to the name is the totality of the person. Graft into our hearts the love of you, all of you, Jesus, Spirit, and Father. The Song of Psalms focuses on this love. Now the church and Jewish community have struggled with what to do with this book. It is most certainly the celebration of human love, but behind it is a much deeper spiritual meaning. And as humans, we are always trying to make meaning out of everything. In Jewish tradition, the bridegroom and the bride represent God and Israel, celebrating the love of their covenant relationship. In Christian tradition, the church and Christ and the human soul are what we look to. Though we can most certainly find in this book a passion, a passionate longing that we might feel towards God, as we have grasped our hearts into the love of you that we are called to. We are called to set aside time to get to a place where the Song of Solomon is reflective of our relationship with the divine, that our hearts beat within us and enlighten and open at the sound of the shepherd who comes to us. And yet this book nearly missed the canon because it has no reference to God at all within it. And many see it as a collection of love poems set within the wisdom literature of the Hebrew Bible. And as such, it is a celebration of all that is good in human life. To the Jew, the separation of secular and religious just didn't happen like we have done in the Christian tradition. The whole of its life, its foibles, its strength, its attitudes, emotions of human and love were all avenues through which wisdom could be found. Sex with all its passion, eroticism, and longing is good. It's given by our maker to color our world with glory. No crude jokes, no snide any windows, as William Temple said, quote, the reason for not joking about sex is exactly the same as for not joking about the Holy Communion. It is not that the subject is nasty, but that it is sacred. And to joke about it is profanity. This book, The Song of Solomon, celebrates human love, its totality, its holiness, its power. And through it, we are pointed to that greater relationship of union, of Christ with all of us who love him. Increase in us true religion, the caller goes on to say. James reminds us that indeed it is love of God, but it is outworked in our behavior and in our sharing of the awesomeness of God's message to all of humankind. True religion connects with the wonder of God in creation, in his creatures, as well as in God's self. Martin Luther poo-pooed the letter of James as an epistle of straw. I wish I could um, agree with him, but I can't. James is the book of scripture that I find the most often pulls me up. It challenges me about my personal foibles and the areas where I find it so easy to slip into sin and be less than kind. And it challenges me and brings me to prayer and to confession. True religion involves a binding of our being, our tongues, and all things within us so that the avenue of sin is limited. But it also involves the doing of service for love of others. Religion, James says, that is pure and undefiled before God and Father exists to care for orphans and widows in distress and to keep one itself unstained from the world, outwardly and inwardly, manifesting a manifestation 
of that perfect gift of love given us from the Father of life. That means that we do, as Christians, need to work on living righteous lives, coming in temptation to have ourselves cleansed so that we can stand clothed in the righteousness of Christ. But we also are called to go out to those who are distressed and those that are in need. This, then, is the manifestation of the fourth plea found in our call up today, bringing forth of good works. Those that renew and transform us as people through personal sanctification and in growth and holiness. To serve others expands our heart. It doesn't matter if the other is a spouse, a neighbor, a stranger, a homeless person, or someone from another country. Compassion and servanthood is what we are called to. And in a world that puts self before others, sometimes we struggle to see that it is holy work when we serve the other. It is transformative work when we serve the other. It molds us into the person of Christ so that the world can see that he is alive and he is well, and he loves us still. It is finding in this inward and outward love of God and openness to God's transformation of ourselves that we find that we can begin to live less as hypocrites who honor God only with our lips. I cannot stand here and say that I have not at times been hypocrite. I have. I've often spoken of what needs to be done, and yet I don't want to do it myself. But God calls me to repentance, as he calls all of us. And he wants for us to be children who are alive with longing, with passion and desire that drives us like the pair in the Song of Solomon, to seek the water of our souls with all our hearts, to being drawn deeper and deeper into a relationship with God's very self. So that evil intentions of the hot human heart are overcome by God's love, grace, and goodness. And in turn, as we live in that compassion, we prayerfully find the places where we are called to be Christ in the world today. May we go forward this day, recognizing and honoring and rejoicing and being joyful in the God who has called us to know and love him and to serve him in this world as representatives of his kindness, compassion, and full personhood found in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you. 
we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. Prayers of the people are form six, found on page three ninety six in the red prayer book. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially for Matt White and Mount Knight and all those victims that have met with violence in Afghanistan, in Haiti, and all around the rest of the world. That they may have a place in your kingdom, Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have 
have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. You, forgive us all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Just wave at people. And sometimes you all bump, but other than that. Prayer celebrations, we like to let people know about the good things going on. I never said I'd like to celebrate the fact that I brought a lot of pears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but the bishop has brought us a lot of pears. And uh, this helps him because he's got a farm and he needs the tax write off. <laughs> His account says that. <laughs> we, have, we have 80 pears. 80 pears. We have 80 pears. The average seems that they were just bought. Uh, gave us
hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. God of all power, the ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, and the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust. And we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, forgive our sins in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law and to open to us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us, by his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly choir, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those who in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Together. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption, redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Leah, and Rachel, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body and one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. <coughs> Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. <coughs> And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are both to sing.
Christ died for you and feed on him by faith in your hearts. 